Okay, good morning. So yeah, first of all, uh, thanks to the uh, India Force team for giving me an opportunity to come here and uh, share some of my experiences. I am associate professor in the uh, computer science and engineering at NITK Suratkal. And I'll be uh, talking about one thing that's very close to my heart, and I have been pursuing this from about like 10 years ever since I joined as a faculty at uh, NITK. And that's why I have given the title of this presentation as Revitalizing the Student Projects by Using FOSS, and I'll talk about six case studies. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. The first thing I'm going to touch upon it, um, what is the effectiveness of the course assignment in today's education system? We need to ask that question. Second, where is the problem in that system? Third, how can FOSS help us improving in this particular process? And how effective do you think a student project would be for a FOSS community? So let's say if I offer a fourth SEM student from my college to a FOSS community and ask, uh, what do you think that student can do? And I have some case studies to tell you. Uh, there are six case studies that I have listed. I'll not read them here, but I have a dedicated slide for each one of them as we move forward. So let's take a look at the true story of the course assignments and major projects in any college that can be. Can be an engineering institution, can be a science, arts, commerce, any institution. Let's take a minute and understand what happens in the course assignments and major projects, the final semester project or one year project that the students do in a part of a team. First thing, these are the most undervalued activities in an education system. Maximum weightage is given for written exam, very little weightage actually for the assignments. And look at the pattern of the assignments that we adopt today. I mean, this was something that was there 10 years before when I joined. And since then, I have been only working on one thing, how can we change this? So first of all, we see that typically all these students, they are given common set of assignments and deadline. It doesn't really matter what I give as a deadline as a teacher. I give you one week, I give you two weeks, assignments are going to be submitted on the last minute. And uh, you might be thinking that this particular picture is for you as students, because you always say the course assignment has been given by the teacher, I have no idea what I'm doing, but guys, this is for me, I am that person. I am that doggy. I don't know what am I doing with these assignments that come on the last minute, that 60 assignments on my table. What am I going to do with that? You know what I'm going to do with it? Going to find out who copied it and who originally did it. <laughs> That's what I do, seriously. As a professor sitting in an institute like NITK, sitting on government taxpayers' money, I'm figuring it out who is copying it and who is doing it. And even then, no matter what I do, I will end up giving more marks to a person who copied it. <laughs> so I kill the motivation of the 10% of the students who actually wanted to do the assignment by themselves. Now, this is bad. This is not the system we want to adopt. Not at least uh, I, I don't want to accept this fact. So first of all, let's look at the problem. Significant effort is spent on catching who copied assignments. No scope of revision. You submit, I evaluate, give marks. Do you revise your assignments? Have you ever revised your assignments? No, submitting once itself is a big headache. Where is the question of revising? So there is no improvement. Limited opportunities to learn soft skills, no teamwork. Yeah, there is a teamwork, copying and pasting. Um, <laughs> Lack of tangible outcomes. How many of you have listed those course assignments on your CV today? But when you enter into the placement department, that's the first thing you have in the front, right? Do you have any confidence? I did three course assignments over seven semesters that will help me to answer my questions uh, satisfactorily in an interview. No, we don't have that. No value addition on the CV of the students. And what about major projects? There is no motivation for it. Take something from somewhere, just do it, submit some report. Goals are not clear. Nobody knows who you are doing. And as a teacher, I always ask my question, you know, I mean, what am I doing? When I joined NITK 10 years back, this was a question I had to myself. Because I got the pile of assignments, like 120 people submitting the assignment in last 10 minutes. I can't even scold them that you did not submit the assignment. They submitted. And how will I evaluate as a teacher? Very strict in the beginning. Full stop, comma, everything. By the time I reach 20 assignments, take marks, yeah. It doesn't matter what you have written. And their students have copied. Now they come and say, sir, exactly same things are written by both of us, but you gave me less mark. And to save my face, now I tell the student, that means you copied. <laughs> I protect myself somehow. Now what's happening, guys? This is not supposed to happen. One day I went to the student clubs at NITK, and I saw totally different things. They are hooked onto their projects. They are sitting 24 hours and working on those projects, but nothing to do on my course assignment. 
that was the day I realized the problem is with me. It's not with this generation. The problem is I don't know how to shape up the course assignments. If I do a better job, these people can do wonders. Now let me take you to what I have been doing. You know, I have been using FOSS throughout my PhD time. I completed PhD in about 2012. I used NS2 for my research. I'm a networking person. I work on network protocol design and engineering. Uh, I tried to reduce the internet latency, try to cut down um, you know, latency and give better speed. So what is it that happened? Now, I ask all of you, you are all sitting in India FOSS. These are the questions that you should reflect. And you should understand how tiny little happiness matters. How many of you remember your first MR or PR getting accepted? Everybody remembers. Second, how do you feel when you get a reply to your query from someone you don't even know? That's the power of open source community. Third, how do you feel when the community started believing in you what you do? Because teachers don't believe students. I'm being harsh about it. I'm, we are smiling. Trust me, many students face a lot of humiliation in colleges. Teachers need to be giving a soft corner to the students. We are, it's high time. This generation can change the world. We need to understand the generation. It cannot just continue like this. And how do you feel when the community starts believing in you and asks you to lead the project? And I just kept a meme over there, you can see. What do you feel when you get first PR merged? See what you do. You just go and do a party that day. Hey, my PR got merged, right? And imagine, you do three solid projects in four years of engineering, how will your CV look like at the end of the day? You join the company, you don't need six months of training. Day one, you are on a project with that company. We need to produce engineers that go and work from day one. If they are supposed to be trained again for six months or one year, then what did I do as a teacher in engineering college? I am not doing my work. So let's go and ask what did I do in 10 years? I made certain some kind of policies, not as rigid as things, but some policies. What are those policies? First, I don't want to go remind the students that you need to submit your assignment tomorrow. They should be self-motivated to submit their assignment. Number two, I will not go asking for telling them, uh, why aren't you submitting? They should come and ask for more projects from me. I don't need to worry about plagiarism. There should be no scope of copying. Projects with tangible outcomes, interactions with subject experts, hands-on experience on live or production level code, project that lasts for multiple semesters. Students work with me for four semesters. Why should I confine one project to one semester? I can take that project, start in fifth sem, take it till end sem, eight semester. For four semesters, if a team is working with me, can you imagine what contribution they will be doing it? And that's what we need to understand. There's no need to break the projects into one semester. And I'll tell you, when final exams get over, currently at NITK, students come and tell me, I'm going on a vacation, but I'll continue this project. They come back from vacation, they take another course with me, they continue to work on the same project. And like this, for two years, people are working on one project itself, focused in one particular area. And the next slide will show you what contributions these kids are capable of making. Most of the contributions are from fifth semester to seventh semester, okay? Learn soft skills, learn teamwork, take responsibility of the mistakes at young age, learn what a mistake is. Sir was telling about the same thing. You need to understand what mistakes you're doing and be a part of the community and contribute. We started our journey with NS3, which is an open source network simulator. Reason we started with that is because I am from networking background. I started making students work on this. As on date, in last eight years, 18 new network protocols have been implemented single-handedly by NITK Suratkal. Two lakhs lines of code today in NS3 is only written by NITK Suratkal students from third semester <laughs> to eighth semester students. And which protocols do you think they implemented? They implemented the fundamental protocol that allocates IP address, DHCP, Google's TCP BBR. The first simulation model in the world of Google's TCP was introduced by NITK Suratkal, fifth semester student. TCP LEDBAT, Apple uses TCP LEDBAT for your iOS and Mac updates. Data center TCP by Microsoft. Some of the best TCPs that are there in the world, our students have implemented in NS3. We designed the app store of NS3. Like you have a Google Play Store, NS3 has an app store. The back end, the front end, the dependency resolution. When you do sudo apt install, the dependent packages also get downloaded. So that dependencies have been resolved. NS3 had a huge issue when Python 2 to Python 3 migration happened and you people know what happened during that time. People had to rewrite almost everything that was written in Python 2 to move to Python 3. We migrated entire NS3 from Python 2 to Python 3. We have contributed more than 70 students in GSOC from NS3 in last six years. They have published 12 papers in ACM Digital Library. We hosted the 10th edition of WNS3, first in India, first in Asia, 
In 15 years, NS3 team has never visited Asia. That was the only time we brought 100 people across the world of NS3 down to NITK Suratkal in a tiny little place called Suratkal. And we received ACM SICOM. If people are there in networking field, you would know. ACM SICOM Systems Award along with many other people. And today, NITK is one among the four organizations in the world that's an executive member of the consortium. That's the power of the student community if you know how to channelize their energy and efforts into the right direction. Well, this was just the beginning. We had another problem at NITK. 7,000 students, most of them use Ubuntu. And one day, teacher gives an assignment, all go and do sudo apt install. So we built our own Ubuntu cache at our gateway, just reserved 50 GB. Any popular package that people are downloading, we cache it. We reply back to you from our cache, and we don't allow you to compete on the internet. Because a lot of traffic, if it goes to the internet, the time-sensitive traffic gets hit. So we serve you locally so that you don't you know, compete with the other outgoing traffic, and we save. This is an open source tool available on that github.io repo. Any institution, anybody in the world can take this and install it in your own organization if you want to do that. Who did it? A sixth semester student. How? I took him. Students were complaining about internet connectivity at NITK. So what I did, I tell 60 students, come. I went and took them to data center and told them how we find it difficult to run institution with 25,000 devices. They said, sir, how can we help? I said, this is one project can you do. I gave 35 marks for course assignment. They did this project. Now, since six years, NITK is using this, and that course assignment of the student is still in use. You ask that student, what was your course assignment? He will say, go to NITK. See, it's deployed on the gateway of NITK. This is what course assignments can do. Let's think about it. <laughs> we increase the complexity a bit. And I say, can, I stu can my students contribute to the Linux kernel? I work on Linux network stack. Yes. When COVID pandemic hit on March 31st, our code written by fifth semester team of three students got merged into the main line of the Linux kernel and was awarded one of the best features of the Linux kernel version 5.6. There is an article written by Foronix people on our students' project. Uh, they have written as to which algorithm we developed to cut down latency. And look at this particular thing they have written. Uh, if you want to wish know more about this algorithm, you can go to this GitHub page. Do you know whose GitHub page is that? It's a course assignment. The course code is also there. See this? And which assignment number was there? That's also there, assignment number 23. And where were they running the project? And the readme, I have just taken this snapshot because this one was fitting in my PPT. But the URL is there. This is a student project. And uh, they started from 5th SEM. They went till 8th SEM. They wrote a paper, got it in IEEE LCN, went and presented in Germany. They have the code accepted in the kernel. Today, you write one command, and you can use our algorithm. As of the reports that I have received, millions of access points in the world currently are using this algorithm as a default algorithm, a student project. Remember that fact, a student project, OK? We didn't stop there. We said, why can't we make our own network emulator? So we started making our own network emulator from 2020. This network emulator has received more than 80 lakhs of funding from two industries. And now, the student projects all together took a separate turn. This was my another stroke that I wanted to put it. I ask you one question. You are a student. You're doing a course assignment. That course assignment is being adopted in the FOSS community. You are actually contributing to the live production code. What if I pay you every month stipend for doing that work? 19 students got 9,000 rupees every month continuously for 10 months to build this tool funded by an industry project. Money coming for open source work and channelized to you. So for the same work that you are doing, you are getting stipend from the college. You are getting 35 marks from the course, uh, uh, course instructor. And the community is accepting your code and industry is using your code. This is a student project that has taken us to the point, and this was presented at Internet Engineering Task Force in Spain. And students did it, everything. Now, recent project that we are doing, we are migrating our campus network to IPv6. We have 25,000 devices in the campus. We said it's high time we go to IPv6. So we got funded by APNIC Foundation. We have about two crores funding, and we have totally migrated our MIS system, where students upload their course projects and everything, to IPv6. This is the current statistics. I don't want to go into the technical part of it. But more than 50% of the traffic is, almo I mean, almost 50% is touching on IPv6. And our VPN services are migrated to IPv6. So what would you do if you have a 2 crore project? You will go, make a tender open, 
outsource this particular thing to somebody to do it. 12 students right now in this room are sitting who are leading this project at NITK. Entire NITK campus network is controlled by students and they are migrating every inch of the network point by point to IPv6 and they are getting stifled from the college to do this work and it is a part of their course assignment in the computer network course. Okay. Now what can else we do with this? So last one minute. What else can we do with the student projects? Students are now writing internet standards. So take a look at, this is an ITF website. This student who is named as Ameya Deshpande, NITK Suratkal, now he is in Google. He has written an internet draft. He's coming up with a new version of a network protocol. Of course, it's not only from NITK, but our students have started working with the best experts in the world and people have come and asked, can I get one of your student to work with me on this? So my student is implementing this whole algorithm that that person is actually uh, proposing. And uh, there's a girl sitting here. I don't know where is she, where is Kavya? I think she's not here. Kavya is there. She's going to be in Prague next week. Uh, in next Saturday, she's going to be in Prague in Europe to present the work that NITK students are doing. And she's fully funded by NITK. And this is also her course assignment. She's doing this as a part of the course assignment. This is some snapshots for all of you since we are at the open source conference. I keep visiting GSOC Mentor Summit. I am a GSOC mentor. I keep going there. Next year, I would request India Post to have a chocolate table where anybody can go and grab a lot of chocolates. Um, this is a sticker table at NITK. If you ever happen to visit NITK, if you're crossing NITK, give me a call. We'll be more than happy to host you and show you what we have. So we collect a lot of stickers. I was running around whole morning today to collect all the stickers from here. And we have an open program for any student in NIT, I mean outside NITK, which is called NITK Winter of Code. We are running it from last four editions. Uh, you can apply if you are interested. And that's it. We are open to collaborate. Uh, feel happy to talk to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any, do I have time for questions? Oh, you want to take questions? I mean, any, any questions? I mean, I, I run short of time, so I don't want to take it. I'll be available here. And I have some stickers for Kosh also. I'm happy to. Uh, share our stickers, so let's meet offline, unless there is any question that we want to take. Okay, thank you, thank you so much.